welcome back, you fox lovers, to another video. We're back with, um, the, um, Corona Mask. And, today, we are gonna be react- Today, we are gonna be reacting to, um, like, anim- Well, scary animated stories. Basically, like, that, I don't know. We're actually three of them. Three horror stories. Okay. Hmm. I gotta put my glasses on for this one. Alright, be quiet, cat. And let's get started, guys. First one. Arizona, but I grew up in Nebraska, in a small town about an hour south of the South Dakota border. My life leading up to my living in Nebraska was riddled with abuse and a lot of childhood trauma. My biological father was abusive, and my mother was absent for part of my childhood. I am also bipolar and take daily medication to make my quality of life better because of what happened to me as a child. I currently okay. reside in Oklahoma. You aren't holding that to boat, start, right? I never really experienced anything paranormal growing up. That is until my mom's boyfriend, whom she is still with to this day, came into our lives. He was a good man and ran a small hardware store at which my mom also worked. Before meeting him, she was married to an awful man that did terrible things to me, many of which I still go to therapy for to this day. After the divorce, we spent a lot more time at her boyfriend's house. Okay. The house was built in the early 1900s, and it was absolutely huge and beautiful. She never told us at first that it used to be an old mortuary. Her boyfriend's father, who moonlighted as a mortician, ran the hardware store in town, which was passed down to his son upon his death. Even after telling my brother and I, my brother being 12 and I 15 at the time, that the house was an old mortuary, it never really bothered That's us. pretty short. We spent our summers there swimming and playing PlayStation 3 and genuinely having a good time. Whoa. Quite honestly, the Whoa. best summers of my teen years. A freaking PlayStation I enjoyed 3. it. The home was warm it's and inviting. Gonna be a PlayStation that is until you got to the basement. The steps leading down to the basement were steep, about ten of them, before you reached the bottom. The basement had flooded many times before, so there was no carpet, just cold cement. Immediately to the right was a refrigerator, the washer and dryer, and the cubicle shower, which was flush against the wall and was positioned so it was directly behind you when you came down the stairs. If you walked forward, okay. there were two couches positioned in an L-shape to the right. The longest one pushed against the west wall. To the left were two brick pillars that acted as support beams for the house, spaced five feet apart with a dirty old blanket hanging between them as a shield. Behind the blanket was a vertical rectangle of a room. One half was a wooden workbench of old tools and trinkets, a random you toilet know, that actually thing. worked and in the far left corner of the rectangle was a small okay. pile of remnants from when the house was an acting mortuary. There was a bathtub, no longer operational, piles of wood shelving, and a small metal table on wheels. I always felt anxious way? going into the basement. I never could figure out why, but the atmosphere down there made me feel uneasy. I would sometimes come down to the basement to get a soda from the refrigerator, and I always had the feeling of static across my back, my neck, and my shoulders. It would make my hair stand on end, and I never walked up the stairs like normal people do. I walked backwards, because there was always the feeling of someone right behind you, making your fight or flight response kick in. It was definitely not my favorite place to be. Yeah, um... I kind of, um, I kind of have the same, I, it's not really similar, because it's not about a basement, but he's in a basement, 
like how he's scared leaving the basement. <clears throat> this is very creepy room. It used to be my room in my uh, my grandma's house. It's a, it's very creepy. There's like a whole lot of weird looking dolls in there. So when I enter it, like, because there's always, because there's a freezer in that room for some reason. I don't know why. There's a freezer. So, like, whenever I have to go get something, because they put stuff in the freezer that don't fit in the kitchen freezer. So whenever I have to go get something, like, I leave the room very quickly, so, because it's creepy. So, yeah. My first encounter happened when I saw a shadow dart across the wall as I came down to get a soda. I knew the shadow wasn't my own, and I even tried to duplicate it, but I couldn't. The shadow passed along the ground level window, almost eight feet up. There's no way it was mine. I left quickly and slammed the door shut behind me. Okay. But the main incident that cemented my belief in the paranormal happened when I was 15. I had just gotten back from swimming all day, and I was I sunburned and looking forward to rinsing off. But of course, the only okay, shower in the house was, sunburned. you guessed it, in the basement. I grabbed some clothes and headed down to get it over with. I didn't want to be down Why there longer than I had to. Basement? I grabbed a towel from the wire rack above the washer and dryer, turned on the water, what? got undressed, and hopped in. The glass well, in the little shower was though. tempered, so... meaning you could see blobs of shapes and colors, but no real definition. I was rinsing off and proceeded to close my eyes and put my head under the stream of water. I moved out of the way, wiped my eyes, and opened them. I froze. Through the glass, I could see someone standing there to the left. My mom was upstairs taking a nap, okay. and my brother was on the second floor playing PlayStation. There would be no reason for either of them to be down there, especially standing okay. still looking at me. I stared at the shape through the glass. That feeling of unease came okay. over me again, but stronger this time. Being watched, I'll take I stood a there for a moment, gathering up the courage to open the door. Slowly, I pushed it open, never taking my eyes off of the figure. But when I opened the door, there was nothing. No one was there. I looked yeah, around, surveying anything. the area. And when I was satisfied that I was alone, Some I closed tree, the door freaking, like, and the figure was gone. Do, I hurriedly see. finished my shower, <laughs> threw on a towel, and started to back do. up, up the I stairs. Think it's, Every uh, yeah, step I took, for, I could feel the sense dies, of unease growing, like an unseen mass like filling the room. Really this happened many more times over the next few years, but I continued to see the I shadow. Mortuary, I so. did my best to ignore it but the feeling of unease never wavered. I never showered with either the basement door or the shower door closed again. Water on the floor be damned. Okay. Hold up, is this tomorrow? When I was little, like six or seven. No, that's a new one. Okay, well, that was the first one. It wasn't really that scary, to be honest. <clears throat> he, what, you're just being watched in the shower, so what? <clears throat> yeah, being watched in the shower is pretty creepy. Like, it's just weird, not creepy, so. This is the next one. So let's just just watch this one. Let's hope it, it's scary. I had though. dreams that I would wake up late at night and see my mom smiling and standing in the darkness of my bedroom, watching me sleep. That's your mom? I would call out to her, but she couldn't hear me. She would just smile and look at me. This was a recurring dream for years. Mom looks like your grandma. And it was beyond terrifying. Great, great, great grandma. When I was about 11, my parents separated, and I went to live with my dad. Although I had told my friends about these dreams, for some reason, I never talked about it with my dad. Until this one random night that we were eating dinner, I asked my dad what he thought the dreams meant. He stopped eating and sat there for a minute, and then finally said, 
You weren't dreaming, buddy. Your mom has had mental problems her entire life. She loves you very much, but you weren't dreaming. She would go into your room and watch you sleep sometimes. This sent a shiver oh. down my spine. And after a minute or two, we He's resumed being eating. By his mom. That night, while laying in bed, I realized something. Why did my mom not respond when I called out to her? She would just stand there and smile at me. He's being stalked by his mom. That's creepy. Okay. The t that one was a short one, I guess. But that, that was the second one. This video is not going to be too long. Um, that was a short. I don't know how long. I don't know how much this was. But that one was short. Um, that was the second one. Yeah, it was creepy. But yet again, why? Why is your mom watching you when you sleep? Don't you? If like. If your dad knows that it's real, then why doesn't he freaking call the police? <laughs> they could just freaking put her in jail. That's what they can do. I don't know. This is the third one, guys. The last one. Time this I story think. happened yeah. was only a year ago. Me being 15 and living with, at the time, just my mom and my 10-year-old brother. My dad was staying was somewhere else for the time being. At this time in the story, we were moving from house to house, financially not very stable, but getting by. We had found a house conveniently right next to one of the largest cemeteries in town, and I didn't mind it, but both my brother and my mom found it creepy. The house had three stories if you included the basement. Something about that basement scared me. It always felt like something or someone was down there, and that whole year we lived there, I never stepped foot down there, not once. To give some context, my room was upstairs. There were three rooms up there, and I'll tell you how it looked for the sake of the story. There was the staircase that went up to a landing, and then a smaller staircase leading to the second floor. My room was the first thing that you saw. My brother's room was to the right of it, and the extra room was to the left. My mom kept the extra room locked, saying that it was unsafe to be in there. Everything about this house felt wrong. According to both of my parents, the house was extremely old, being built in the 1800s. It was freaky. All the doors had those creepy old keyholes, and the way that the house was structured seemed unnatural and weird. The turns and placement of rooms was odd, only making the house seem creepier. I never minded it until this happened. I had been texting my friend Chloe before deciding to set my phone down and finally get some sleep. Yeah, friends. I don't remember what time it was, but it was late. I fell asleep rather quickly, being worn out from school and stress. However, I'm a light sleeper. Any noise could wake me up. I was turned on my side facing the wall when I heard the loud creaks of the stairs. The steps stopped at the landing, creaking ever so slightly, as if someone was rocking on their feet. I ignored okay. it, but it did make my heart race as I heard the steps begin mm. again, Noise stopping at the top of the noise. stairs. I don't know why. It was probably my brother. No big deal. Closing my eyes, I heard my door creak open, and footsteps come into my room. Stopping at the edge of my bed, Those are weird looking feet. someone was standing over me, just watching. A bit freaked out, I did a side glance and out of the corner of my eye, I saw you. my brother standing over me. And letting out an annoying grunt, I asked, What do you want? There was no response. Sighing and closing my eyes, I rolled onto my side. I opened my eyes to look at him again, and my heart stopped. He wasn't there. Standing up, I trudged to his room, but he wasn't there. No one Brother's was there. Weird. After that, 
I felt uneasy as I turned to go back to my room. But okay, I froze. Very creepy. That door that was always locked was open. Did he go in there? I remember going in and grabbing my phone, turning on the flashlight and just standing there, staring at my floor. Okay. Something felt so wrong. My gut told me that I wasn't alone. There was someone in there with me. Yeah, and they you were are not alone. good. Slowly I went to shine my light into the room to see if my brother was there. There was nothing. At this point I heard my heart pounding Not in my ears as I shut the door, quietly going back to my room. I told myself it was my imagination as I laid back in bed and closed my eyes. I fell asleep eventually, silently muttering prayers under my breath to put my mind at ease. I did question my brother the next morning if he had gone upstairs, but he just told me no. Ever since that night, Every night I hear footsteps coming from upstairs, and they stop at my door. I began to have nightmares of a very tall man coming up from the basement and to my door, peering his pale face inside to look at me with his unnaturally wide and terrifying oh. smile. Not oh. only that, but the door that my mom kept locked since then would be found wide open almost every morning I woke up. Something was wrong with that house, and I'm just glad we don't live there anymore. Wow. Okay. Okay. That was the last one, guys. Yeah. Well, like, just comment down below if he got scared. Yeah. <coughs> And uh, don't forget, subscribe to my brother, Johnny Play, subscribe to Blue Titanium, um, MLG Creeperhead. <clears throat> Who else is there? Hmm, I don't know. Nah. Subscribe to Ed I Senpai also. Just subscribe to everybody. You know, just just subscribe to everybody in the link in the description. Just, yeah. And if you haven't already, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video. It's a revolution.